So my name is Lubos Yehoda. I'm the uh, account director at uh, Kasper Jung von Matt, which is the advertising agency for Budweiser Budvar in the Czech Republic and has been for the past 10 years. What I basically do is I am the head of client service that takes care of Budvar as a client and I also help uh, the senior agency people with the strategic planning of campaigns that we do. So when it goes to the overall environment in the Czech Republic, as, as far as beer is related, we've seen a declining market. Um, this is mostly because uh, there have been tax increases uh, on uh, alcohol. Um, and the second thing has also been that people have been moving away from big breweries, which own all of the kind of major brands on the market. Um, um, and because the, the quality of the beer that the big breweries produce, this is mainly Heineken, Warson, Coors and, and, and S.A.B. Miller, um, has been going down and they've basically been producing what the Czechs call Euro beer, a kind of generic tasting beer. Uh, so they've been moving away and we've seen the whole market decline. Um, and we've also seen a lot of innovation on the market um, with uh, flavoured beer drinks, lemon flavoured and other flavoured beer drinks, which is basically a way of the big breweries to kind of fight against the declining market as they're kind of f trying to find a new target audience, uh, women, um, people who do sports, um, even drivers, because sometimes these flavoured beers are non-alcoholic. Uh, but the general market has been dropping for the past three years within a rate of around 6 to 8% a year. Well, the very beginning of the situation was that basically uh, Budvar, as our client, had a declining market share uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, its overall sales were declining together with the market. So, um, in a way, we were in the same, maybe slightly worse position as all of the big breweries on the market. Uh, the other thing that happened was that Budvar decided to do a brand perception research, a very complex brand perception research, out of which we found that when it goes to checks um, and their relation to Budweiser Budvar as a brand, they either have no uh, emotional relation to it or they basically find it flat, they have no, no relation to it at all. And when really prompted to kind of show what they think about the brand, to show at least something, it was divided. On the one, half people thought it was this kind of premium luxury export brand, which relates to the fact that Budvar before the fall of communism was mostly a export intended beer, so you couldn't get it in the Czech Republic. And the other half thought it was this kind of very wooden, honest, local village beer, which is connected to the fact uh, that Budweiser, or Czeska Bojovice, where it come from, uh, South Bohemia, is, is a part of the country where a lot of Czechs go for holiday, and it's kind of a nice place of nature, and, and they spend time there, and it's kind of this traditional area. So, so the, the real problem from Budvar was our market share is dropping, the overall sales are dropping, the market is getting smaller, and we have a brand that is strong in export, but when it goes to the home market, people don't connect with it. And if in any way we prompt them to connect with it, it's a divided world that is completely on the opposite sides. The wooden against the very premium, high-class beer. So uh, the brief was, try to give a, a face to the brand so that we can fight our way on this declining market. In, in developing the campaign, or in developing the idea itself, um, the first thing that Budvar, together with, with us, did is basically it took the roots of the product and tried to develop a positioning, because it had previously a, a, a positioning that clearly wasn't working on the Czech market or people didn't understand it correctly. Uh, we um, identified a target audience, uh, and Budweiser Budvar is a Czech brand, it's Czech owned, it's owned by the Czech state, uh, but it's also uh, the beer itself is produced the same way it was, it was produced 118 years ago. So when we talk about an overall declining market, the market was declining when it goes to the big breweries, we were declining too, but it was mostly because people didn't know that we don't do Euro beer. They couldn't tell that we don't do Euro beer. But in essence, the product itself isn't a Euro beer. And we found a very good link with the target audience because 
Um, if we look at people who are willing to pay more for premium beer, and Budvar is in essence a premium beer, we found that these are the people who are most searching and looking for the microbreweries. These, these are the people who are most looking for the authentic beers and who are most turning away from the big multinationals. And we found that basically what we want to tell them, in essence, is that Budvar is a, is a microbrewery, is that Budvar produces the beer the same way as it has been 118 years ago, and that basically um, it is the essence of authenticity when it goes to beer production. And, and we just wanted to tell them that. Now, if we just told them that, it, was, it would be very rational. So we built the whole campaign on, on a unified idea, which again stems from research that we'd made amongst this target audience, where we found out these people, and now I get to the lifestyle level, very much feel that they are uh, pushed to agree with everything in their lives. Um, and this is uh, an insight that's probably not just Czech, but in, in the days today or today you're basically pushed to, to agree with everything, to say yes, to, to confirm, to conform. And Budvar is different because as the only brewery, as the only big brewery on the Czech market, it has refused to confirm, conform and it has refused to produce a Euro beer. So Budvar has said no to producing Euro beers and has said no to, to doing anything that would basically endanger the quality of its beer. Thus it can inspire every Czech not to conform, to stand behind their own convictions and to say no more often. And that's the connection between what is a lifestyle insight that links to the target audience and what stems from the brand itself. The idea is not for the, for the brand to inspire Czechs to say no for no reason, to say no to get up in the morning, I don't want to go to work, oh, this is the brand that inspires me to say no, I'm not going to go to work. That's not the essence of the idea. The essence of the idea is uh, for, to inspire Czechs to say no where it really counts and where it can lead to positive results. A no that means I say no because I stand behind what I really think. Um, that's the essence of the idea. We were then uh, developed, uh, developed the idea into two levels. Uh, on the one hand, a level which is meant to explain to the people why we are the brewery that says no, to explain the product part of it, because we have said a few defining no's over our history that has kind of conserved the quality of the beer itself. And then the other level is the inspirational level, where we try to work to inspire Czechs to say no more often, but, but it somehow always ties in and leads back to the product itself. So when it comes to the product campaign, where we are explaining in rational reasons what we've said as a brewery no to over the past 118 years, we used media that can generate high awareness fast. So we mostly used outdoor uh, for that campaign, particularly in, in, its, in its beginning. Um, in the Czech Republic, outdoor is relatively flexible, so we used uh, big boards, billboards, CLVs. Um, and we also added an internet side to it, uh, to the product campaign. When it goes to the lifestyle part, the lifestyle part is mainly intended to give a emotional link between the brand and the people. It speaks, the peop it speaks their language, it works on a relevant insight. So uh, when being emotional, we um, had to use audiovisual, so we used TV uh, as made the main backing of that campaign, um, and, and we had two TV spots. Uh, but we also, in the long run, we use internet to play on the no inspiration, both social media um, as well as a specialized internet project that we have running. Internet and social media is the place where we provoke discussion. The TV spots are something that is, was very much discussed in, in the Czech Republic because they are provocative in the people that they use in, in one way. But in the other way, we started a project which is called the No Gallery, uh, where we look for, say, everyday Czechs who have said some defining no's in their lives and present them via articles, videos, um, podcasts, etc., etc., etc. And this is a completely in independent project. We, as the advertising agency, we don't control it. It's run by independent editors. They choose the people. 
so that we don't influence it by who we think should be in there. And these, these people in the No Gallery, and today there are about 70 of them there, they provoke discussion. And it's when people get interact with the brand. And they don't interact with it because they don't like or like the taste. They interact with it because it talks their language. It talks their insight. That's why we used internet. That's why we used the No Gallery and why we kind of work with the No Gallery through social media.